So our first speaker here is our good buddy, John Krajewski. I'll let John introduce himself and his title. So why don't you uh, take it away, John? Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining today. My name is John Krajewski. I'm based in Southern California. I've been with the lineage of Wonderware, Invensys, Schneider, Aviva for going on 23 years at this point. And my current role within the organization is the Vice President of Product Management for the Operations Control part of the business. Um, hopefully by the end of this session, you kind of understand what the operations control part of this business is, high level, what our strategy is and what we're attempting to execute here, and a quick sneak peek into some of the things we've done around 2023 and then the latest releases of some of those offerings that we've placed in the marketplace. I know that you're going to have some deep dives into some of these areas, and so I will just basically skim across the top for a lot of this um, as we're kind of introducing it. There was some questions at the beginning, and so I will go ahead and uh, just kind of note that, yes, there has been a public uh, uh, offer made back by Schneider to repurchase the outstanding shares of Aviva. This is not a closed transaction. This is not something that even if it does get completed will happen anytime in the near term future. I'm going to guess it's probably going to take into sometime next year before anything like that would close. However, I can say that the general intention that's been stated publicly with regards to that is that Schneider would still remain to have Aviva have it be a separate entity, that it would still maintain its own brand presence, its own kind of P&Ls that would be reporting up through Schneider, but it's not intended at this point to be integrated more directly into the Schneider business. So business as you know it and interactions as you know it between Aviva directly and our channel partners should not be disrupted and shouldn't change effectively. So I'll keep that in mind, but certainly more details of that will come. And with that, we will go ahead and jump more into my direct intention here, which is to talk a bit about Aviva operations control. So I've got this first kind of slide here that I'll show you that describes kind of the, the, the broader portfolio of Aviva. You know, Aviva, if you're not directly aware of kind of its history, you know, it is a business that Aviva is a brand that started, I believe, in like 1967. Um, and when you look at so much of the engineering portfolio that we have around the 3D visualization, not only the visualization, but the design aspects that we have and the CAD capabilities that exist in the program that came to us via Aviva, um, as you may know that Schneider Electric software was combined with C with Aviva and Schneider Electric brought or brought to it the things like, you know, like traditional brands like uh, Invensys uh, or Wonderware or Indusoft or even SimSci and some of the uh, Avantis and APM capabilities we've had and, and a lot of the Wonderware MES capabilities as you're seeing across here. Um, we recently uh, had a significant acquisition that took place of the OSI organization, which brings to us this operations information, as well as this data sharing mechanism that you will hear kind of in the future being referred to more as a Viva Data Hub. Those come to us via the OSI acquisition. And a bit of what I'll be talking about actually will tie into some of this enterprise visualization as we look at a strategy here as how we can kind of take our visualization technologies and utilize it to represent the broader portfolio. Um, but the focus of my discussion will be around this corner of the section called operations control. Uh, operations control is really a tradition that uh, has gone back to us many decades within this organization. Um, you know, key cornerstone brands in this industry like Wonderware, things that we've created like System Platform. We brought SciTech to us because they were part of SciTech when uh, they were part of Schneider Electric when Schneider Electric acquired Invensys and they became part of the broader portfolio. We acquired the Indusoft business to give us asp uh, access to a much lower and smaller footprint into that market space of kind of a core HMI down there. Um, and for many, many years, we've kind of operated these brands independently. You can still buy InTouch independently. You can still buy System Platform independently. We're rebranding SciTech to what's being called Plant SCADA. And now Indusoft's Web Studio was referred to um, as Aviva Edge. Uh, and you look at these things. And what I'm going to be describing to you is kind of how do we strategically intend to bring these things together? So there's not a, hey, when do I use SciTech or when do I use InTouch or when do we use System Platform? But I have a more cohesive and understandable strategy strategy around what what types of what what markets we're going after with different parts of the portfolio and how those things line up from your in a perspective of the individual products. 
you know, this is a timeline here showing you kind of the evolution of our industry and the evolution of our business. And if you look at the the blue kind of ovals that are sitting out there, you know, looking at it where it says number one all the way up to 15,000, that's kind of talking about the scale of systems as we've seen them. You know, scale of systems, you know, when we first started, you know, we were basically pilot device replacements with PCs being, you know, placed inside of control panel doors. We still do a lot of that, right? Whether it's a control panel door or a handheld wireless device, it's still kind of, you know, control panel our pilot device replacement that's happened as we've kind of moved up into broader aspects of kind of distributed SCADA and kind of approached more of kind of a DCS on Windows kind of a, a intention what we've done with system platform and then we've gone into this as you look into the insets access anywhere we've done more web-based delivery delivery remote capabilities focus more on situational awareness and scales of applications that tend to increase and reach into the millions of points and now as we start looking into uh, that enterprise visualization space, we see the far right hand side where we talk about 15,000. We have some customers which we're engaged in and committed to supporting that number of users into a system. No longer in that case, we're really actually looking at it from a perspective of control, but it's the distribution of operational data around a long and a larger enterprise organization. And so you can see that there's many features and functions. These products serve many uh, specific intentions. Um, and as well as there's a broader portfolio outside of what I'm showing you here, we have other things like historians and reporting capability, and we have things that provide skills management and collaboration between individuals. And we found that it was very difficult for people to understand the broader portfolio at a glance because we were looking at them from its pieces and parts perspective. So if you look kind of this from a strategy perspective of how we're going to looking at it internally, originally I created this slide to help my own R&D teams understand the expectations around what I'm asking them to deliver. Um, it actually started pivoting it because people took to the uh, to this notion quite well, and we're starting now using it more externally as part of this. But when we look at this in terms of the day and the life of, um, I, I look at this not as an HMI or a SCADA business. We look at this as an operation software capability. What is it that needs to be executed by the operations within our customers' organizations? And we're giving one example here of a day in the life. This doesn't mean that if your day in the life doesn't fit this mold, that that's incorrect. But more, this was meant to illustrate an example of how I want our portfolio to go across um, the capabilities and the expectations that a customer has or an individual will have within their organization. I kind of looked at this more from a control room operator's perspective of, hey, before I even leave my home for the day, I may want to kind of understand what is the status of things so that when I get there, I know if I'm running into a burning fire or if I can take that time to grab that cup of coffee in the morning. Once I receive, once I get there on site, I'm going to want to have to receive a shift handover from the outgoing shift so I understand that there's continuity of what's happening in that process. At some point, I'm going to want to do a production plan review, maybe meet with the teams to understand what our expectations and then work with the systems to achieve those operational states. Things happen that I don't expect to have happen, and I'm going to need to be able to provide assistance to people in that organization. I'm going to continually need to monitor those equipments, diagnose those problems, research ways to resolve those problems identify under abnormalities that are happening in the process and address those abnormalities, continue to upskill around the different aspects of my business and the things that I'm doing, facilitate the handover for the next shift as people go out and then maybe review my daily activities. Now we have a broad portfolio and there's probably a half a dozen or so of our products individually, which would have delivered this capability. But as we go forward, we're just calling this entire set of capabilities Aviva Operations Control. Much like if you look at the example I often use as the analogy of Microsoft 365, where all the things that you need to perform your daily office operations are put together. They have surrounded a bunch of on-premise capabilities like PowerPoint, Excel, Word, with a bunch of cloud capabilities which surround them. Things like uh, SharePoint and OneDrive and Teams, and we're using that as a platform communications collaboration. All of this being kind of what Microsoft is calling Microsoft 365. When you look at what we're describing as Aviva operations control and our expectations are as to how do I provide a cohesive way of being able to absorb, manage, deliver, and maintain all of the capabilities across our operations control portfolio. And that is what we're calling Aviva operations control. It's a very exciting timeline that's gonna involve not only uh, a number of capabilities brought together, but we're gonna talk just a bit about kind of commercially, how do we decide to go to market with this? 
We recognize not every customer does the same things and providing everything to everyone would be very difficult in achieving the proper price points and capabilities that are necessary. So what we did is we kind of looked at what our customers attempting to execute and how can we align the packaging of our uh, of our outcomes in that way. So I'm going to start bottoms up on this particular side here where I talk about edge first. When we look at our customers at the edge, those are people that very often are doing panel based operations or maybe uh, people walking around a plant floor and tablet space based operations operations still with the need of supporting some offsite capabilities there and remote access. But typically the things that they're working on are the here and now. I need to start this machine. I need to achieve this operational state. I need to deal with this breakdown emergency. I need to do something that tends to be also smaller in scope. I may have a panel that sits next to a process that operates that process, but that panel is not going to be operating the entire plant or, or in terms of the multi-site operation. And our focus there is to converge all aspects of the information that's necessary to achieve those control states or what I call control convergence. Moving up to that second tier that I refer to as supervisory, this is a space where typically our supervisory controller SCADA applications have resided. Typically, they're either in control rooms or area workstations, still with the need of being able to support mobile and remote access, tends to have a larger scope, a larger number of points that you have an area of responsibility, they tend to have a larger process view and perspective, then things you're attempting to achieve tend to have a bit of a longer term uh, a goal. I need to achieve this production plan. I need to maintain these uh, these assets that are scheduled here. They tend to have also a different scope of type of uh, software and components that are brought together, whereas they may have more MES things or batch things or inventory management or lab systems that I need to bring together into what we refer to as OT convergence or operational technology that needs to all be brought together into one experience. That third tier, the top one here that we're referring to is enterprise, which tends to have a longer term focus and the things that people are attempting to achieve, more focusing on strategic outcomes of the business where you're not really actually maintaining the operational state of something, but intend intention here is largely to um, optimize operations, achieve better profitability, uh, reduce waste consumption, reduce energy consumption, um, maybe expand your business, uh, create new products and take to market and understanding how your operational systems are going to be able to uh, maintain that or uh, achieve those outcomes. They tend to be a very, very large view, maybe the entire enterprise. And we start looking at the technologies that bring it together. And this is where I start talking about the convergence of information technology as well as operational technology. And you'll also hear us also talk about the convergence of engineering technology. So sometimes you'll see that as IT, OT, and ET, um, where this is the one I was describing earlier of potentially engaging thousands of people. And we have organizations that have the need to be able to place that operational information into the hands of a vast majority of those people and often not only those ones and many of them not actually responsible for the daily operations but they may be responsible for other aspects of uh, obtaining the strategic goals of an organization and, the, and they have to put this in the hands of many so while there often can be command centers and you have heard us use terms like unified operation centers which fit into this space or remote operation centers, we're increasingly seeing the focus of the distribution of this information to casual users through either uh, web app or web browsers or mobile applications. And so this is an, a space that we're really, really focusing on expanding into. But all three of these are going to be kind of core of what we're calling Aviva Operations Control. How we package them up for uh, for consumption is rather uh, aligned to what I just described. We have three core packages, edge, supervisory, and enterprise. We do expect that some of our customers will use these pack packages together. And so you can purchase them individually or, or purchase them in combinations. But we do have aspects of things that tie them together. And this is what we're referring to as our common com components. Whether it's field communications, skills training and collaboration between individuals, reports, data analysis, overall system management and development, those are aspects that we're bringing together a set of core components that go across those things. We also are targeting these to be as industry agnostic as possible so that we want to have these be relevant in every vertical. But we do know that there are certain aspects of our portfolio which tend to have great uh, vertical affiliation. And so we'll have those available as add ons. Examples of that would be things like our MES solutions and some of the guided analytics things that we're doing inside of Insight as well. And so there are expansion packages that we can add on to this, although we do expect that core aspect of uh, Aviva Operations Control to kind of cover your, your core you know, operations control responsibilities. 
Now, when it comes to this, the one thing I will say uh, and implore to you is that we have decided to do something uh, that is game changing in the marketplace with regards to how you actually get your entitlements. In essence, when you buy a package, you will then identify the number of people that use it in your system, and then you're given complete and total flexibility to achieve any architecture you need, and it doesn't change the cost. The cost is purely a base of, uh, based on the number of users in that system. So if you need to put more points into a historian, you have all freedom to do that. You want to add a second historian? Sure, another object server, no problem. More communications drivers, put them on as you need. You want more screens, more web servers, any type of thing that you need. The only restriction that we have is are based on users. Identify the number of users, and then you will have complete and total architectural flexibility. So if you want to segment your solution so that each department can determine when it shuts down and they can maintain their system, you don't have any impact on commercials um, impact on that strategy. You focus on deploying the technology in the way that helps you meet your outcomes. There is virtually not another commercial model like this in the marketplace, and we're very excited to introduce this to customers and give them those total freedoms in achieving any outcome that they are able to and not be limited by commercial models. So we're really, really excited to bring this to market and have more and more of our customers see this. Now, in terms of how these things map to the products that you may know and love, um, these, this is the mechanisms by that, they, they, that, that, that these map. So in touch and edge have been placed into that edge pack category. Plant SCADA, as I mentioned, which is a rebrand of SciTech and System Platform, I put in that supervisory category, and Enterprise has been placed, uh, our Unified Operations Center has been placed in that Enterprise category. And you can see how some of the other things that we have, whether it's your communications drivers, teamwork, reports, insight, system monitor, and integration studio, fill out that kind of common components. Now, you may ask yourself the question, can I still buy these individually? Yes, you can still buy these individually. You do not have to move to a Viva Operations Control, but we believe that there are significant advantages to those organizations that wish to adopt this, advantages that are both commercial in nature as well as outcome in nature. We really believe that we're ushering in a digital transformation for plant floor operations all the way up to the boardroom. And so we're excited for people to get their hands on this and 2023 makes some big road uh, inroads towards making a lot of these things more a reality because we don't just look at this as a packaging of things together. We're looking at how do we link them together? How do we make them part of a, a common capability? And so when I look at these things in terms of 2023, and we're going to look at this as, you know, edge supervisory and enterprise, we're going to talk about some of the updates that happened in a lot of these pieces along the way. Many of the people that you'll be hearing from today will give you details on this, and so I'm just going to give you a high-level flyby as part of these, and I'll move through it rather rapidly. So when we look at the Enterprise Edition of Aviva Operations Control, our focus here was to really provide a, 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 that IT and OT convergence across a large number of users. And one of the first things you'll see is that there's a new term on that screen. It's called System Platform Enterprise. It's one of these bubbles at the bottom here. If you look at System Platform Enterprise, it's a new addition to System Platform. We kind of took a cue from Microsoft again in this example, where Microsoft has SQL Server Standard and SQL Server Enterprise. For those people that don't need the enterprise capabilities, they can buy standard. And if somebody does need the enterprise abilities, they can provide, the, they can purchase this through the Enterprise Edition. Now, with the Enterprise Edition of System Platform, you have the introduction of a new OMI web client. I mentioned that we have the need to distribute this to number a number of users. And we have customers already working with this. We actually had a call. We had two pre-releases of this to, to a couple of customers. And so we've we've actually got OMI web client running in some larger facilities right now. Um, in this case, it's not OMI for use of con controlling the operation. But in this case, we're using operations management interface and its ability to contextually access external data and applications to facilitate that convergence of different information technology and operational technology inside of this. We've added new uh, web widgets and apps around Pi Vision integration, so that, that interl interlinks into the OSI acquisition that recently took place. Power BI integration, as that tends to be a pretty common tool for people to aggregate data and look at those systems together. And we are able to contextually access dashboards based upon the asset that you're trying to analyze at that point in time. And increasingly taking many of the existing OMI applications that we have in the market and making them completely web native. And that's what the web widget pack is talking about there. Now, I will go ahead and answer a question I suspect will happen in many heads is because, well, don't we need an OMI web in the SCADA space? And we do, and we eventually will introduce that OMI web into the SCADA area. In the terms of the, the uh, 
an investment that we made there. We focused on this enterprise space first, um, as we already have access anywhere working with LMI on the plant floor for, for primary control. As we look to fill out that full set of capabilities and everything LMI can do in the web will be something that we're investing in in a future direction. So if I take a look here, kind of uh, an example of, you know, what a, a unified operations center kind of looks like here. And this is an example of one of the uh, the components that we make available, which is the unified operations center for renewables. We don't expect customers will just take this and deploy it because every application is unique. But by providing the unified operations centers for renewables, it provides a number of templates, core asset templates, as well as visualization standards and symbols that can be leveraged as, and the entire view app that can be leveraged to navigate the expectations of kind of what is a more of a unified operations center. It can access all different um, uh, um, components and, and pieces and uh, operational and information technologies that are required to support these outcomes. Um, and is part of the every uh, Viva Operations Control Enterprise Edition gets access to all of our Unified Operations Center's templates as part of that entitlement. I'm going to look next at the supervisory and kind of what were the major things here. And we're going to focus initially on the things that we did on System Platform. And with uh, System Platform, one of the key things we recognize is that with the OSI acquisition, uh, we wanted to do a better job of integrating into that uh, enterprise data management platform that they know as Pi System. So within the Pi system, uh, they had traditional connectors to, to the Wonderware technologies. And what we've done is we've actually created a native integration. So you may be familiar that we already have the ability to, to replicate data from a tier one historian to a tier two historian. Well, now you can actually select either the Pi system or the data hub as a, as a replication target. Not only will it be able to replicate and backfill data to those solutions, but it will also replicate into the asset framework model. So that system platform model that you've created, you can replicate that up there so you can have a, a consistent asset model across all of those different systems. You'll also see that we, re, we reworked the entire in, integrated development environment and we took a new design standard across all of Aviva. And so you will see that this is kind of a theme that happened across a number of our products where we rework the user interfaces to make them all have a consistent user interface. As I mentioned and very at the top of my uh, presentation that many of these technologies came through via uh, mergers and acquisitions. We now wanna have one face forward as a single Aviva as we go forward and these modernized experiences will be taking place across all of every product and every aspect of, the, of uh, all business units. So not just on the operations control. We, include, we intent, and continue to increase our focus on integrations of the cloud. How can I take teamwork activities and put them directly into my, my OMI application? How can I publish content up to the cloud so I can use them inside of Insight? How we interconnect our cloud components and our on-premise components is becoming a strategic part of the things that we're working on. We also recognize that in the supervisory space, there are critical uh, standards out there that we need to be world-class in, like OPC UA and MQTT, as well as IEC 61850 in those power uh, markets there. So you'll see that we have introduced a lot of extensions that are focusing on improved areas of those types of standards. Some of the examples here I'll share with you, I mentioned that we reworked the IDE and the integrated development environment. Here we're showing you a quick example and a walkthrough of how you open a, how you open a Galaxy. And once a Galaxy is open, you'll see that the IDE now utilizes a ribbon bar. Um, and this is a standard again across all of Aviva so that this user interface will be one that's replicated not only in, in this product, but you'll see across many of our other products as well. One of the other expansions that we made in this space is the thing that we uh, we did with teamwork. Uh, we recognize that you know with the with the pandemic and the social distancing that everyone had to do, that there was an increased need for people to be able to stay in constant contact and become an expectation for platforms like Teams and the ones we're using here. You'll now see that we can actually perform chat functions directly within teamwork. And in long term, we expect to be able to support video as well. So exciting things are happening inside our teamwork offering. And with the edge area, we had a lot of effort went into InTouch. InTouch got um, a lot of new capabilities. We've been working since the 2017 update one release to kind of complete out the InTouch web service capability. And now InTouch web is as complete as it's ever been and it's in a fantastic state. We're really happy to see people take a look at that. And I'll show you an example of one of my favorite new features that we call workspaces in just a moment. The ID, the InTouch, uh, the development environment window maker got the same type of treatment that the IDE did. And so I think you'll see that in a follow up session where we're going to show you some of the things we did around the ID, uh, the in touch window maker. 
We also expanded InTouch's tag support. We have been limited to kind of 60,000 tags inside of InTouch for over 20 years, I believe. Now we've actually provided unlimited tag support and we've actually run tests over 300,000 tags inside of a single InTouch application. So really making significant investment in InTouch. Now down in that edge area, we're actually are focusing a bit more in some of the things that we're doing around integration and some of the things around artificial intelligence at the core edge. And many artificial intelligence applications leverage Python. So we're going to be putting Python support directly into Edge first, and then you'll see it find its way through across of many of the other aspects of our portfolio. So a lot of investment happening in these core areas. And I'm going to show you one uh, quick little demo of one of my favorite tools, which is called Workspaces. This is the new InTouch demo application. If you haven't seen it, definitely look at it, install InTouch. You can see this and tear it apart. I'm showing you here um, workspaces that you can create on in InTouch. This is in the web. You don't need a development environment to create these workspaces. You can build these uh, on your tablet, on your desktop, um, and you all you need a web browser. You're able to then utilize these and they can be completely responsive, which means as you reshape your um, browser, these tiles will rearrange themselves and restack themselves. Every one of the graphics that you're seeing here is one of the graphics that you can use in your application. So anything that you've built can be something you can use in your workspace. These, tile, uh, these graphics you're seeing on the right here are just graphics that I put into a, a toolbox or a tool set that we called workspaces, and then they become available inside of this web environment. Our focus here is not, this is not a full engineering environment. This is a, a, to be used in any one of those examples. If you've ever been in a case where you're trying to do something, it's like, darn, I really wish I had the ability to see five these five pieces of information together very rapidly. This allows you within seconds to put that type of a solution together and then store it and share it with others. And it's really, really exciting um, to, to be able to bring this to you uh, in these new capabilities. So I know I flew through that rather quickly, and you're going to have a lot of people that are going to go into a lot of the details for this, but hopefully you get a flavor for how much we're really bet betting on bringing our portfolio together, bringing all this end-to-end -end and that full day in the life of your expectations together into a single experience. With that, I will hand it back over to Mari. Thank you so much, everybody.